Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and today I'm going to be listing my top five Rom V comic books. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups, and I'm going to be talking about my top five favorite comics from one of my absolute favorite comic book writers currently today, Rom V. Big fan of his work. He just recently released Radio Apocalypse. He's working on Venom right now. He's got the upcoming Carnage book. But there's a lot of like creator-owned stuff from the last several years that if you haven't checked out, I would highly encourage you to do so. Also, he's killing it over at Swamp Thing right now. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the list. At number five, I've got Graffiti's Wall, illustrated by Anand R.K. with lettering by Aditya Bidikar. This book is absolutely fantastic, and it's one of the Rom V early works that really helped start putting him on the map, right? You can get it in a graphic novel expanded edition right now from Dark Horse Comics. It's relatively cheap for a hardcover, and it is totally worth it. The story centers around these four young people. Um, they're kind of friends, they're all kind of connected, and it's about their evolution through through their young life and the evolution of the city of Mumbai, right? Mumbai is, I think, where Ram B is from. Um, he writes a lot about that city. He describes it as being like, there's like a billion people in a place that's like very small, so it's always crowded and there's lots of stories, but there's this this haunting beauty to it, right? That really comes across in Graffiti's Wall. It's about this kid, you know, he's like a graffiti artist. There's this other one with these big dreams. One of them gets involved in crime. They all start growing up. They take, their lives take different paths. It's got tragedy to it, but it's got hopeful, hopefulness. It's got a hopeful despair to it, if you will. It's a really striking book. The artwork by RK is freaking fantastic. You can also catch his artwork on a book called Blue and Green, and of course on the, uh, the, the current Radio Apocalypse. The styles are completely different. This dude can shift and change his style to what is appropriate for the story, or I guess just whatever technique he wants to do. Amazing book. Highly recommended. At number four, Black Mamba, with artwork by Dev Promenik, Rosh, and Kishore Mohan. I just recently read this early work from Ram V, and it completely blew me away. Just like Graffiti's Wall, it's very much centered around Mumbai and a story about that, but it's a definitely a darker, more twisted story, right? So it's four short stories that are all from the perspective of this one detective or something like that. And it's about all the tragic heinous and sad and depraved things that humanity can do, right? It is, it's just, it's really a depressing read, but I wouldn't say it's as hopeful as some of the other work from Ram V, but it, it is, it is sad and depressing, but at the same time, it feels real and honest. And I really liked it. Plus the stories are kind of weird. There's this one about a stray dog. There's this one about all these rats and the people that get paid to go and kill like 400,000 rats a year or something like that. Really interesting story. It's kind of a little bit like, it's like dark, not quite horror, but it's it's definitely dark and, and in your face and brutally honest. Like I said, this book blew me away. It was fantastic. The artwork is all done in black and white and you got different artists there, Rosh, Kishore, and Dev. They are doing absolutely fantastic utilizing the, 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 the black and white so freaking much, using so many innovative techniques, um, great pen work, just absolutely fantastic artwork. They each stand out from another, but they create one collective whole of a feel of this town, of these stories, of this character. And that's something that absolutely just sells this book. But sells this book. Definitely check it out. At number three, I'm going These Savage Shores, with artwork by Sumit Kumar, coloring by Vittorio Astoni, lettering by Aditya Bidikar. This is the book that first really got me noticing Rom V. It came out from Vault Comics. They were having a string of hits. Turned out that a lot of those strings of hits were from the White Noise crew, of which Rom V is a part of, right? I loved this book. It immediately grabbed my attention because it's a vampire story. Uh, and it's set in India during like the British colonization days and things like that. And, but it, it deals also with like Indian mythology and lore and, 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 and folk creatures and stuff like that. So it's about 
one form of monster invading where that already has a history of its own monster. And it's a really interesting thematic premise and also just makes some really exciting comic books because you got vampires versus like Indian demon beast things and it's pretty freaking awesome, but it's got this really subtle, nuanced approach to it. With its thematic material, what it's saying, and it's just absolutely eloquent in its use of language and the driving force of the narrative. The artwork, slam bang fantastic. I have never seen a book done in the nine panel grid that feels as free as this book. Absolutely. Kumar nails it. The coloring by Estoni, holy freaking cow. It's like just beautiful, enriching to the line work, which is already great and has a masterful flow throughout. And then that lettering. This is where I started noting, noticing Biddy Carr's lettering, and he is 100% the best letterer in comics. These are people at the top of their game, and now, a few years later, they've only gotten better. These Savage Shores, definitely worth checking out. At number two, we've got Blue and Green, illustrated by Anand R.K., Blue and Green was my favorite comic book of 2020. This book blew me the F away. Seriously, right? Rom V with this like story set in Mumbai, like kind of telling the, the story of a city as a character through the characters in the city. Going on to like more fantastical stuff with his superhero work and these savage shores and then just killing it on something completely different in technique in story, in tone, in form, Blue and Green. Blue and Green is a story inspired by jazz music, right? So Rom and his creators, they wanted to approach the book that way, right? And the entire team does a fantastic job. RK's artwork, look at Graffiti's Wall, look at Radio Apocalypse, and look at this. It's wild, the, the difference in tone and mood and technique and look and feel and atmosphere. It blew me away, right? And the approach to the book was a bit kind of like a jazz-esque approach. I think Rom like wrote a page, sent it off, then they colored it, then they put it together, then the next page, right? And there's all these repeating visual motifs of like spinning circles, like records. And there are moments where, where the, the structure of the artwork is very tight and rigid. And then it goes off into like this almost not formless, but a more free formed approach to the visual storytelling. So it kind of replicates the feel of like an improv, an, an improv like jazz ensemble piece or something. It's absolutely amazing. It's the story of a dude. He's a saxophone player. If I remember correctly, he finds a picture of someone. His mom has passed away. He finds a picture of this dude playing the saxophone or trumpet or something. Um, in his mom's belongings, he becomes fascinated with this picture, trying to figure out who this person was, because this is a part of his mother's life that's so connected to his life today, but not something that he was connected with through her while she was alive. This leads him down this spiraling tunnel of madness, and it's got an almost Hellraiser-type vibe to it, not meaning like Cenobites and shit, but like it's got this like slow burn and build and revelation. It is absolutely fantastic. So the structure, the innovation, the story, the execution, pitch perfect, top notch. It was like my favorite comic in 2020 and it maintains as one of my favorite comics I've read in my adult life. And at number one, I'm going The Many Deaths of Layla Starr with artwork by Felipe Andrade. I know this one's still kind of new. The trade paperback just came out, but these five issues blew me away, and I think it's the best work I've read from Rom V. But I am not sliding anything on any of his work. They all are worthy of being in their own appropriate top fives, but these five books are super strong. The Many Deaths of Layla Star is about the goddess of death who gets fired from her job in heaven, right? Because some baby is born in on the earth in India who will eventually create immortality, right? Find a way to defeat death. So they just go ahead and kind of go ahead and tell like, we're just going to go ahead and let you go because it's about to happen, right? So she spends all this time, she lives several lives because each issue is her at a different point of this kid's life trying to find this kid and kill the kid to get her job back as the god of death, right? But each issue is a different time period in this young man's Young, young man, regular ass man, and then old man. Like it's a whole journey through his life, through her eyes and her journey of learning humanity and that story and her part in it through this kid's eyes. Like 
freaking fantastic. It becomes an exploration on grief, but ultimately, grief and death, but it ultimately lifts itself up as an exploration of life and, and how precious it is and how, like, each moment. This book touched me. It was resonating. Each issue was like a self-contained story. That was one of the absolute best comics of this year. This whole thing was my favorite comic book of 2021, I should say, because this year is now 2022. That being said, the mini deaths of Layla Star, holy cow, the artwork, it's got this interesting style to it that really adds to this whimsical nature in this story and the, the lettering, everything. It's just so perfect. The coloring, the city feels like a character. It's another thing that comes across from, from Ron V's work that I've read throughout his career so far. And it's a brief career just starting. Holy cow. I don't even think we've hit the best Ron V book yet because I think it's still yet to come. Always pushing the, the innovation of the technique always pushing what you can do with story, always pushing a, pushing the resonating themes that you can approach and do it in such a delicate, non-intrusive way that really seeps in subconsciously and causes some kind of effect, at least inside of me. Ron V is just tip top, my favorite writer in comics today. These are the books that I would highly recommend that you check out if you haven't already. There you go. What do you dig about Ron B's work? What are your favorites in the comments down below? Please, let's keep this conversation going. Oh, and by the way, be sure to like, share, and subscribe and join us over at popculturephilosophers.com for podcast blogs and a whole lot more. I've been rocking Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on reading. Station. Pop, pop. Boom. Boom. <laughs>